Hey guys, real quick before we get into this video, I just want to let you guys know that this rec video was recorded before Christmas. Uh, right after this video was recorded, I had gotten my hands on the new editing software, and as you guys can see right in front of me, I am still playing with it. Uh, so, yes, I know I'm going to say, like, you know, some a couple stuff before the Christmas, um stuff this is good coming up uh just so you guys that just want to let you guys know that uh yes i know this video is behind it's just new software i'm still learning it uh so i just wanted to give you guys just just a fair heads up uh on that guys i hope you enjoy the video <laughs> Tristan here from RC Bros 2000 and I have a video for you guys that's a little ahead of schedule. Initially I wasn't going to upload any videos until after the holidays, but with three days before Christmas something came in the mail that I just could not wait and it's a perfect opportunity to do a video for you guys. Um, before we go into the video, first off I want to say I hope you guys are, uh, have a good ho holidays because as of this recording right now, we are three days away from Christmas. So and that is a big day. Well big time season what so yes guys I hope you guys are having a good holiday season um, and let's get into this video so as you guys all know I am very big in, when it comes to the 3d printing as I have two Robo 3d r1 pluses when it comes to the individual printers I have red which is the first printer I had bought refurbished through Robo 3d and then there's blue which I got secondhand from a friend of mine and as you guys can see blue is currently running it's actually printing a part for a Ghostbuster thing whereas red is currently on standby it's actually completely disconnected there is no power no data and that's because this printer blew up and the reason why it blew up I will show you so both my printers have what's called a heated bed and what that does is there's a heating element underneath the bed surface where the prints print on top of. And what it does is to keep the parts from separating from the bed and where you get lifting and bad prints. Well, on red, the printer that I bought refurbished, you guys can see on the cable that leads to it, which is just right here, there's a bit of a... Well, the insulation to the wire has been rubbed away and you can see the bare wire underneath. Um, and what is speculated to have happened was that this, while it was traveling back and forth, the cable was rubbing against the power supply and once the insulation broke, it made electrical contact and short circuited, which killed the wire and from what I can tell, the connectors for the printer. Now, that's the extent that I can tell what's wrong with it, but without it getting at least these replacement parts in place, I cannot be for sure. Uh, I did all the checking of the fuses and whatnot that are built into it. I will show you guys what those are when we get the printer open again, and we will look into repairing this beast. So let's get into it. So underneath the bottom of the printer, we have our power supply down here, our X and Z axis motors, as well as the brains of the unit, which is an Arduino Mega 2560 right here, which is a small microcomputer, as well as what's called a ramps board, which acts as a sister board to the Arduino, because all these pins back here match up perfectly with the Arduino itself. Now, as I said, the Arduino if you don't know, is a small microcomputer that you can actually program to do whatever you like with. In this case, they set it up so that it is a machine, a computer for printing. Um, and it's a very simple way to modify that. Whereas the RAMS board acts as more of a um, nervous system for the Arduino, bringing in power through these top two connectors and distributing it through the motors and all the other accessories as well as taking the information from our Arduino and telling it to the motors to drive whatever the Arduino is telling it to. So it's just a, a simple communications board and power delivery board. Now the issue that I had found with that spliced cable I had showed you 
was when it short circuited it took out the connectors for all the wiring as well as on the ram sports so this is one of the power connectors you can see down here that's been charred and so the same with this connector and the same goes for the male versions on this you can see there's some charring on both female connectors down there so these are what we're going to be replacing on this machine now I've gone through as said before and I've checked all of our transistors all of our MOSFETs which are these some of these black pieces right here our fuses which are these big white pe uh, yellow pieces not white um, and yeah, I just went over it and from everything that I saw it all looked good so we should be able to just replace these connectors and it will be back in working order so that's what we're gonna do right now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start setting up to do the soldering to remove the male connectors on the ramps board as well as I already have the replacements for these so the way I'm gonna be removing the connectors from the ramps board is by desoldering the four pins for each connector now this can be annoying if you don't have the right tools but luckily I have what's called solder wick which if you don't know anything about soldering this is the stuff that you use that will literally absorb the uh, solder from a through hole or any component so that it'll be a lot easier to remove so all I gotta do is lay it over where I want it bring in the soldering iron and lay it over it laying it heat up see it's starting to smell so the point of this is we're heating it up till the solder becomes molten which can take a little bit and it will absorb the solder making it easier to remove I'm already starting to see some solder bubble up there we go it's hard to see with this camera this camera is not so great at doing this but yeah I can see now that it's is absorbing some of the solder so that is how we are going to be removing them so I'm going to do the same for the rest of the connectors so as you guys can see I managed to get the old connectors out one of them ended up surviving the extraction the other not so much so now it's as easy as popping the new connectors into place this one specifically I had to bend and then the other one and soldering the pins in the new spots all right now the new connectors are on and yeah the soldering points will all look good so if those that do know how to solder see this one right here you can see that it's exceeded past the normal connection points for all the other pins as you guys can see this is because when I was desoldering the old connector I'd found out that the pad that these normally solder to was actually coming undone the heat from the short circuit had actually started to delaminate the copper uh, pad that it normally was soldered down to so I had to uh, bring up some of that coating and solder around that point um, but yeah it should be good now so let's uh last thing we need to do is patch that cable real quick and then we can put the printer back together so to patch this little lengthened cable that's become bare all I'm really gonna do is I'm just gonna take some shrink tube go it right on over covering up that spot where the insulation failed take a light come on come on up oh, guess my uh, lighters dead so instead of refilling it because I'm out of the fuel I'll go a little overboard Alright, 
and she's fixed. All right guys, so I have my printer all hooked up now and we're ready to go. Uh, I have confirmed that the extruder heats up properly the way we want it to, but now it is time to test the problem that was originally wrong with it. So I'm going to be keeping a close eye on the temperatures right up here. So what I'm going to do real quick, all right, so let's see what happens. There we are. Now it's going to heat up. Yep. We are back in business, my friends. All right, guys, so that's it. Um, let me know what you guys saw of the video down below. Uh, this was just kind of like a test run for kind of the more stuff I'm wanting to do. Um, kind of got a little more in-depth. This is what you guys didn't know. Not everyone knows 3D printers. So, yeah. Um, let me guess what you guys saw. Because uh, that uh, definitely was some something fun to record. So, all right, guys. Thanks for uh, sitting next to me while I uh, got Red back up and running. So I will see you all next time.